Hey, it's Sir Fudgems here, bringing you another World of Warships video. And this time, I'm going to be showing you how to set up and run your aircraft carrier. So first, I'm going to start off by showing you how to set up your aircraft carrier with modules and also uh, commander crew skills. So first I'm going to show you commander crew skills on what you should have in a commander for an aircraft carrier. Alright, so let's take a look at Kelly Shaw who is my commander for my aircraft carrier. And this is what I have. And this is what you should, this is what I highly recommend that you do for the skill points for aircraft carrier commander. So over here is the aircraft line tree you want to get all of these points all of them and you want to start off by getting all of them first once you have these points then you can move on to all the others but really I'm just focus on getting on all these points and there is no uh, tier 2 uh, commander point here so I moved it over here and I click this one because this will help service time for torpedo bombers which helps a lot because if you don't have torpedo bombers in the air going after the air uh, the uh, ships that you want for the target you're you're useless you're sitting duck you're you're just the target so what you want to do is you want to get the service time on your planes as fast as possible so you can get send them out and do as many attack runs as possible. All right. So now that I've showed you, I'm going to show you this one. You want expert rear gunner. You want torpedo arm armament expertise. Then you want dogfight expert, and this will help with your fighters. Really, it will help out a lot because I've seen it with and without this crew skill. It's it's pretty amazing. And then uh, aircraft servicing expert, you definitely want this. This will also help with the service time for your planes to reload and rearm, refuel, get out into the field and start attacking more ships again and more planes. And then this one especially. I don't have this one yet, but once I do, oh my goodness, you, you become a real danger to other enemy uh, aircraft carriers because uh, you get plus one fighter and plus one bomber and if you have the uh... If we go to modules really quickly here if you have the uh... the flight control here it is flight control mod two for independence or any other uh, aircraft carriers that go for just aggressive gameplay if you have at least one fighter to also protect your torpedo bombers and your dive bombers, yeah, that that helps out a lot. But anyway, going back to oh no 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 there we go. Okay, going back to my commander. Finish off here. So once you get this skill, this skill, this skill, this skill, and this skill, then I'd highly recommend going to basic firing training to help improve your AA efficiency so then the other aircraft carriers when they send out their planes to try to attack you you take out as many planes as possible with your aircraft carrier it also helps to keep your planes near your aircraft carrier at first sometimes not all the times or when you see more fighters than you can take with your aircraft just keep your aircraft flying around your aircraft carrier that way it brings their fighters towards your aircraft carrier because they want your planes but if you keep your planes near your aircraft carrier it acts as bait they'll come over and they'll decimate their fighter squadrons making it giving you an opening to attack their ships so then finally and then this is the last one I think that you probably will get for a command skill for an aircraft carrier captain is advanced firing training. Now advanced firing training that will help with range for guns and also range for the AA uh, defense too. So that will help you significantly and then that will keep 
if you keep your planes near your aircraft carrier when you feel as if that they're that your planes are in danger from the other enemy's aircraft uh, carriers fighter planes then you got it you have them safe for a while and then it, once they're all shot down by your aircraft carrier or your planes near your aircraft carrier you have an advantage where you have an opening to go take out their ships while they're resetting their fighter planes to go out for another run so let's that's that's what I have for crew skills I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure for how many commander scale points that a commander gets but I believe it is around the 20 point system and I've heard but I'm not sure or I haven't confirmed that it is 20 points and that's all you get so I'm based it putting my basis on 20 points that you can spend only on a commander because otherwise I'd be putting it more points on like situational awareness so in that way I know I've been spotted and also basics of survivability and also fire prevention and high alert but those were points that would be like yeah that would be good to have but it won't make you great uh, aggressive or defensive aircraft carrier so you wouldn't be a a very efficient carrier if you if you didn't if you don't have these points here so anyway now that we talked about the skill points and what your commander should have let's talk about modules and we're gonna show you on my independence how I set mine up now you definitely want to upgrade all your planes first then the hull and then finally you can either keep the flight control pad or the or the way you want your plane set up I like this one because you get one fighter one torpedo bomber and one dive bomber that's what I like about it you get a variety and you and I like variety and I like to keep it a variety and it helps me as an aircraft carrier than going all out aggressive in defending or playing complete aggressive trying to take out the enemy ships as many as possible I like doing the aggressive but I like having a fighter squadron to defend my planes if need be and then for modules here's what I have air groups modification one this increases the aircraft guns effectiveness so planes get a better upgrade there and then uh, 20 percent to fighter survivability that's a must I like that one that really helps out there's also different ones that you can pick like a modifications two. yeah but that doesn't help your planes because your planes are your attacking force and they need to be buffed either way and or you can do flight control modification this would probably be good for the Japanese aircraft carriers or if you're just playing just all-out aggressive you probably want this because this helps with temp, this uh, subtracts 10% to aircraft servicing time which helps out a lot with torpedo bombers and dive bombers so that would be a good one to have there if you wanted to go all out aggressive but I'm going with the fighters because I like to control the skies and when you control the skies you also control the seas mostly and then finally damage control system modification one this is I think more helpful than propulsion or steering uh, repairs because really you're not really supposed to take any fire but you might take a little here and there but this will help make sure that if you do take on a little fire a little bit of fire or flak from the enemy you won't get set on fire or flood as easily as you would without it and then finally damage control system modification 2 this also prevents the flooding and the and well helps subtract the flooding recovery time and the fire extinguishing time so that makes it a whole lot faster to put out fires without using a repair repairability so that's what I covered for equipping your planes uh, equipping your aircraft carrier to set up the way that it should be set up 
so that you have a better chance of survive survivability in PvP and PvE. And now I'm going to show you some gameplay on how to run them. So first I'm going to start off by showing you in the Hosho. It's a tier 4 aircraft carrier, Japanese. And the plus side with these guys is they have two torpedo bomber squadrons. So that's what you get and then you get one fighter squadron. So it's pretty pretty good for aggressive for being an aggressive aircraft carrier. So it go out if you find a target, you send out your two torpedo planes at uh, or your two torpedo squadrons in two different directions at the same target and you launch your torpedoes at them. They'll have a chance of dodging one or two, but they can't dodge them can't dodge all your torpedoes so it becomes real interesting there so now let's see here now we're gonna start up playing a co-op battle just to show you how to do the simple controls and how and what to do for playing in co-op battles and the strategy in co-op battles in co-op battles it's completely different than playing in PvP battles because the computer can only think so far as to what to do but your main goal in an aircraft carrier in a co-op battle is to cancel the effects of the other aircraft carrier and to also spot help spot and take down the other ships as well but your first priority is making sure the other aircraft carrier doesn't wreak havoc on your fellow players and here we go And so far, the biggest threats are destroyers and cruisers to aircraft carriers. So you want to be aware of where they're at at all times. Or have an idea where they're at. So you stay away from them. But you also want to stay near to your main attack force. So here I am. We're going to go to map mode by pressing M. And you select 2 three and four two is your fighter squadron three is your bomber squadron four is your other bomber squadron so to in order for them to get off your your aircraft carrier or to launch them you press F and you can continue pressing F but you have to select your squadrons so if you don't select another squadron then it will and once the squadron that you have here selected if you press F again they'll go right back into your they'll go right back to landing in your aircraft carrier <clears throat> all right so now that we have map mode and we see that we have a couple battleships over here cruiser Group destroyer destroyer cruiser battleship okay so now we want to set a course now that we have all our planes are out so what we want to do is you want to hold shift and make sure you have your aircraft carrier selected. So you want to click a route. Mode enabled. And it will start you off at half speed. A half speed, excuse me. <laughs> and then you want to select your main bombing planes and you want to select a designated point. And now that I see that they have their bombers out, I'm going to send out my fighter to go take care of them. I see a Wyoming, so I'm going to send out my fighter planes. Excuse me, my bombing planes, my torpedo bombing planes, to go take care of this guy. And you're wondering how I did that. How I selected my bomber planes and how to how to attack an enemy air, uh, battleship or cruiser destroyer. So what you do is you select your your torpedo bombers. You just click on the left mouse button, click them, and then this will bring out an automatic attack run plan. And you can move this icon around this circle to whichever way you want the torpedoes to run. What I want to do is if the battleship is turning toward its port, 
port side, you want to hit them on the starboard side. That way it gives you greater advantage of getting more torpedoes into him. And now that we saw that our uh, attacker planes, our fighter planes, attack one squadron, I need to take out their other squadron. And you can see here, it's a lot of emphasis on focusing and making sure that your, your planes hit the target and just checking to see where they're at and seeing and just keeping them busy. That's the tough part, is multitasking, okay? If you're good at multitasking, this is this is the shit for you. It also plays like a chess game for aircraft carriers. Okay, now we know officially where the aircraft carrier is. Because he just sent out... Oh, there they are. They're all right there. So I'm just going to continue on using Our team is my fighter plane. And selecting and attacking their bombing... Their uh, torpedo bombers, because they're a threat to my team. So I'm going to just continue on taking them out that way. And you can tell when a fighter squadron is out of ammunition, when the bullet icon is zero. Once it's zero or down to one, uh, well, when it gets down to empty for their for their ammo, they'll go right back to your aircraft carrier to reload and reservice. And then, uh, ooh, oh, being attacked, being attacked by them, great. So you want to try to avoid that, because now he led me into his carrier, so you want to be careful of that. So here's what I'm going to do, now that he's got, yeah, he's been blown to bits, so now Our team has taken the lead. my fighters have free reign over his fighters, as an equal chance there. And now that we've taken this whole, whole side over, I want to get closer to the battle so that it's less fight time. And now that I'm low on ammunition, I'm just going to send my fighter squadron back to my aircraft carrier to reload Waypoint and to reached. send them out again. Now when you lose aircraft in a squadron, these bars on top of them, they show you how many aircraft you have in a squadron. Now I lost one fighter from that, but it wasn't a complete loss. And then once you send them back to your aircraft carrier, the uh, this little icon with the fighter and the torpedo bombers uh, icon, those are how many planes you have in the reserve in your aircraft carrier. So once they land, they refuel, resupply, and also add fresh new aircraft to the squadron. Now, if your whole squadron gets wiped out, you'll and you still have some in reserve, they'll automatically put all the rest of your planes, whatever you have left in the reserve, into your squadron, and that will set off a new squadron. All right. Okay, I want to do that. This will be interesting here because you want to avoid having torpedo bombers near islands because that will mess up an attack run. See, I only launched two torpedoes there, and that wasn't really good. There we go. That's good. That's a good one. He's going to get it now. One. Returning. Boom. He is gone. Yeah, gone. All right. Now I can send out the fighters. Our team has taken the lead. And just keep him lit. There's also another rule for fighter squadrons when you finish off taking out the enemy's aircraft. Is you can use them as spotting planes too. So that's also a good thing. There's always a rule for these planes to use. Always use them. If you don't always use them or don't use them or play them with with a with an idea of keeping them in the battle then your team has a disadvantage because you're not using your aircraft to the full ability all right bomber planes are now set and reloaded and that's game
So that's how you play in co-op. And as you can see there, okay experience, okay credits. And that was an okay game. So now I'm going to show you a PvP game or random battles in the Independence. Now this is a pretty good aircraft carrier. The advantages are it's much faster than the Bogue or Langley will ever be. And that gives you an advantage of getting out of an area when the all of a sudden destroyers or cruisers try to come get after you. You can at least have the advantage of leading them to your other fellow shipmates to try and take them out before they take you out. But the disadvantage is they have no artillery fire, so they can't really defend themselves. The only thing that can defend this aircraft carrier is its planes and its squadrons. So, yeah. But still, it's a great aircraft carrier in my opinion. And with the, once I get the crew skill of uh, air supremacy, it will be even a better ship. So here we go. Random battles. Okay. All right. Here we go. Okay. We started off a little late due to computer loading issues. But here we go. So we want to select our carrier. Not select our carrier, our aircraft carrier. Our ca excuse me again. Our aircraft. And send them on their way. Autopilot mode enabled. Alright, against us we have a Ranger and Independence. I do not know what our other aircraft is doing, so I'll ask. Usually when usually when you have a multiple of aircraft carriers and you're not the top aircraft carrier, you want to try to ask the the other aircraft carrier in your team to say, "Hey, do you want to team up on these uh, on this other aircraft carrier's planes or their aircraft or just want to focus on attacking and make sure they don't whack you in the sky or what the deal is? You want to try to team up and work together. If you don't, you'll be at a complete disadvantage like what he's having right now and you want to try to cluster your planes especially with the with the mod for the aircraft carrier deck with what I have you want to try to cluster your planes together that way your fighters can defend your attacking your attacking route because unfortunately for him it looks like one aircraft carrier is playing completely defensive and one aircraft carrier is playing aggressive i believe the ranger is playing aggressive and the independence is playing defensive which is pretty good that's a good setup so now the main goal is to figure out oh okay so let's see here. This guy is a problem to my team. So we need to go over here. Waypoint reached. Who is he? He's in an Atlanta? Okay. He has pretty good anti-air defense. So you gotta be careful with him. So you gotta set it up. For an attack run. Group four. We're under attack. Attack! 
Three, returning to ship. Group two, target destroyed. That was a good hit on that Cleveland. You try to want to avoid of attacking Clevelands because they're just the the ships that are equipped to take care of anti-air and take out other planes. So that would be like your second to last target, but to the situation that I was in, I chose him. So and it did all right. I lost a few planes, but it was well worth it. All right, where's my aircraft carrier? All right, so he's not near the battle. So let's get him closer to the battle there. I'm only seeing one battleship so far. And they only have one battleship. Oh. All right, well then, I better focus on the cruisers, because the cruisers are what are going to mess up our team here. That ranger looks really badly damaged. Ready. And you always want to keep your planes ready. going. You always want to keep your planes going. If you don't keep your planes going, then you'll have a a space of time where you're not able to do anything because you're waiting for your planes to be reloaded and refueled and send them out. Because there's a reload time for them to land and a reloading time and then a reloading time for them to take off. There's two waiting periods that you have to wait for your planes to become ready to go. Okay. All right, so let's select our bombers to go with our torpedo bombers and our fighters to go with our torpedo bombers. And our torpedo bombers will be the main guiding escort squadron to escort all our planes to send to head on over there. Atlanta looks like he's becoming real aggressive now, so we're going to attack him. He's going to hurt gonna be in pain. Surprise! Here I come. And judging that we lost our main force, I'm now switching. Now turning around. You gotta look at this beforehand sometimes. Like figure out what the enemy's doing. And now I'm gonna switch to full speed and get my aircraft carrier out of there. The advantage with an aircraft carrier is your fighters are your main, your planes are your main fighting force, not enemy. you. Group three, taking fire. Group three, approaching target. Returning. Group two, we're under attack. Group three, returning. No, that was a disappointment. Very disappointing. All right, and then for selecting aircraft that are near your carrier, you just left click on on the, the lead. bombing squadron or fighter squadron or torpedo squadron that is near your aircraft carrier, and they'll automatically light them up as long as they're in a five a five point oh kilometer range then they'll start becoming lit up by your anti-air and start taking out plane after plane. But now we're going to guide them. Roger, proceeding to assist you. We're going to help him out here. We don't need him. He needs to go bye-bye. 
on a little late. It's always plan ahead with your aircraft carriers, otherwise this happens. So far, he's lost some supply from here. Route 4, maintaining present course. Group 3, ready for takeoff. Might win this. Woo! Feel sorry for that destroyer captain right there he got whacked real good all right let's light him up see if we can get him there he is have fun with that buddy four approaching target four returning to ship dang we lost him or did we? Group two, awaiting instructions. Group three, we are under attack. Group three, engaging enemy. Group three, returning to ship. Damn. Alright, so they got us in a pickle here, but if we can keep them away from our base for as long as possible. Group two, tell them to get on cap as quickly as possible. Group two, taking fire. Now I'm going the far route because I can't really... I cannot get whacked by them, because if I get whacked by them, it stops my my plane la my plane's landing and taking off. And it looks like we might win this. We might. Group 4, taking fire. Group 4, engaging enemy. Nope. Group 4, returning. That might be a good thing to go after. Is he going to the starboard? He's Wait, going to the reached. starboard. Group Three, taking fire. Battle ends in five minutes. Okay, this is it. Group 
Three, approaching target. If you could escape, our team Both. is taking the lead. Oh man, we really, 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 really need to take out that guy. Route four, ready for takeoff. Group two, standing by for instructions. Over. We might lose this just because. Oh. Well, yeah, we might lose this. Yep, we lost because they capped. Yep. So that's all it takes. But hopefully, it gave you an idea of how to run aircraft carriers in random battles. It's a whole lot different than a cooperative gameplay. But when you do really well, you you sink ships and you'll carry like a boss. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something with uh, aircraft carriers and World of Warships.